Good afternoon on today's Angry Bulletin. Utilizing data gathered by Breakthrough Listen at the Green Bank Telescope in West Virginia, a team from the University of Amsterdam have found 49 previously undetected extraterrestrial signals that have thus far defied all natural explanation. The signals are both incredibly powerful and mind-bogglingly short. And if we are to assume that they're artificial, what purpose could they possibly serve? All of this and more coming at you on The Angry Astronaut right now. Good afternoon. Once again, welcome to The Angry Astronaut. Coming to you sans sunglasses today because for once I'm not going to be wearing them while I'm talking about extraterrestrial matters. And I think I've just kind of come to the conclusion based on a few of the comments that I've received that if I wear sunglasses, I'm going to kind of get thrown into the same category as people who uh, wear unusual outfits, have strange looking beards, that sort of thing, who seem to be involved in the ufology community and and uh, these strange beards and curious get-ups tend to be combined with questionable degrees and questionable education, questionable backgrounds, that sort of thing. And so I certainly don't want to be lumped together with those folks because I really do my best to try to take a hard scientific look at all of these things. Because even though I've been very interested in the possible techno signatures associated with some of the astronomical discoveries that we have made in the past, I haven't talked about UFOs until recently. I was quite the skeptic, actually, until less than a year ago. Really, it was all of the testimony that we've seen in front of Congress that kind of changed my mind on all of that. But today, we're going to be talking about things that we can definitely document astronomical phenomena that we definitely know is there and still have no natural explanation for it. Before I do that, though, I'd like to also make sure to recognize the 27 people who joined on Patreon, became part of my Discord community. Thank you so much for doing that. It's going to make a huge difference to my ability to report on these upcoming launches in Boca Chica and of the Vulcan Centaur in person something I definitely want to do and cannot do without your support. So thanks very much. And if you'd like to join these folks, you can do that by just going to the description for as little as $3 a month. Okay, that's enough talking about that. Let's talk about these recent discoveries. Now, of course, the phenomenon of fast radio bursts is nothing new. It's something that uh, has been talked about extensively in the astronomical community. And if you were to uh, read many of the press releases on fast radio bursts these days, you would think that we've pretty much locked down where they come from. They come from a particular type of star called a magnetar, actually a collapsed star, a neutron star of a very particular and extremely dynamic dynamic type, but that actually may not be the case. And now, folks who have made it their life's work to look for extraterrestrial signals, signals coming from other civilizations, have actually stumbled across an entirely new type of fast radio burst that really has everybody confused. That, combined with a recent paper that indicates that fast radio bursts may not be coming from magnetars at all, deepens the mystery even further. So what are fast radio bursts? Well, put simply, they are blasts of electromagnetic radiation in the form of radio waves usually emanating from galaxies beyond our own. In fact, only one clear fast radio burst signal has ever been detected in our own Milky Way galaxy, and that one is ridiculously weak compared to the ones we have detected from millions or sometimes billions of light years away. It's also a very common thing. Astronomers suspect that there are thousands of them bombarding our planet every day and we only pick up a small sampling of them. Their durations are extremely brief, ranging from milliseconds to just a few seconds, and many of them repeat. As a matter of fact, this year alone, we picked up 25 new candidates that were giving off repeating signals. Now, technically, a repeating radio signal is a hallmark 
of a techno signature. As a matter of fact, if the wow signal that we picked up in 1977 had repeated, it would have qualified as the first genuine extraterrestrial signal that we had received from another civilization. So why don't these signals qualify? Well, two major reasons. Number one, they are simply too powerful. The fact that we can pick these things up from millions or billions of light years away make them an impractical form of communication. I mean, it would require a colossal amount of energy to send these signals across this colossal amount of distance. That being the case then, why would extraterrestrial civilizations engage in such overkill, especially given the fact that whoever they're sending these signals to millions of light years away would never be able to respond in a realistic time frame? And to make matters even more complicated, why would we see these things all over the universe? Why would so many civilizations decide to use such a useless form of interstellar communications? Now, before we delve into that discussion, let's talk about the actual discovery. In 2022, researchers at the University of Amsterdam hypothesized that there might be fast radio bursts that would last not thousandths, but millionths of a second. Quote, During our group meetings, we often talked about it, says Mark Snelders, PhD candidate at the University of Amsterdam and in charge of the research that uncovered these ultra-fast radio bursts. By coincidence, I found out that there was a public data set that we could use for this. The public archive was actually from the Breakthrough Listen project, designed to search for extraterrestrial life. That archive, originating from the Green Bank Radio Telescope, contained five hours of data from the known repeating fast radio burst source known as FRB 201-211-02A, located some three billion light years away. <laughs> Let me say that again. Three billion light years away. In other words, that signal came out when our solar system was still very young. The data is comparable to a movie. The researchers divided each second of the first 30 minutes of data into half a million individual images. Next, they used software filters and machine learning to search for outliers. And in this way, 49 previously undetected signals were discovered and eight of these lasted only 10 millionths of a second or less. These, of course, were categorized as ultra-fast radio bursts. What was already a very deep mystery has become a mind-boggling puzzle, and the signals themselves are very odd as well. Quote, bursts from FRB 201-21102A, yeah, you gotta get used to those sorts of things if you're talking about astronomical phenomena, they show a variety of different morphologies, from simple, single Gaussian burst profiles to complex drifting islands of emission, now known to be characteristic of repeating FRB morphology. FRB 201-21102A bursts often appear to be narrow band, which once again coincides with artificial signals and have been seen to emit at frequencies between 600 megahertz and 8 gigahertz. We have shown that there indeed exists a population of ultra FRBs that current FRB search strategies are missing. The computational expense of searching for ultra FRBs because of the required high time resolution has resulted in them being undetected in all other FRB searches to date. Furthermore, scattering is a significant limitation to resolving such timescales when observing at low radio frequencies, in other words, less than 1 gigahertz. So as far as we can tell, there are many, many signals, perhaps hundreds or even thousands that have simply gone undetected. But what does this mean as far as techno signatures are concerned? I mean, we have detected a fast radio burst, in fact, a repeating fast radio burst coming from a magnetar within our own galaxy. Very clearly, magnetars can generate fast radio bursts. 
Well, here's one of the big problems. A recently published paper that for some reason is seldom discussed when we're talking about the origin of fast radio bursts detailed an in-depth study of gamma ray burst sources which are associated with magnetars. It was concluded that the same phenomena that create gamma ray bursts from magnetars would almost certainly create fast radio bursts as well. Six different gamma ray sources were studied in great detail. Four of them at the Green Bank Telescope, which is the same one that was used in the previous study, and two more from the Arecibo Radio Telescope before it tragically was destroyed. The studies went on for a sustained period of time, far longer actually than the previous study we discussed in this video, sometimes observing the gamma ray sources for as long as 448 minutes minutes, and in all six cases, no fast radio bursts were detected at all. Now keep in mind, these are extremely active magnetars, the very types of magnetars that we would expect to be associated with fast radio bursts, and there were no detections whatsoever. Although the researchers were quick to point out that these non-detections cannot exclude the young magnetar model of fast radio bursts, it places constraints on the burst rate and luminosity function of fast radio bursts from the these types of targets. Again, there seems to be a big inconsistency here, and it throws the entire model of trying to associate fast radio bursts with magnetars into serious question. That combined with the fact that fast radio bursts have been detected in regions of faraway galaxies that should have no young magnetars, that makes the problem even more complicated. But if the source of fast radio bursts, or at least some fast radio bursts is not a natural one, then what possible artificial application might they have? Well, as I've discussed a number of times on this channel, Avi Loeb proposed that perhaps they're being used to propel colossal radio sails, because interestingly enough, these narrowband, high-frequency signals are perfect for pushing very large radio sails to a substantial percentage of the speed of light. We're talking about ships the size of Jupiter being pushed to 50% of the speed of light by some of these signals. So why do we only see them for a fraction of a second? Well, because the beams sweep across our field of view for only a tiny fraction of a second while they're doing their job. And that also explains why certain sources repeat, because they're pushing one target Target after another towards some sort of interstellar destination. And so why do we see fast radio burst sources all over the universe? Well, because perhaps this is the most efficient and effective way of traveling between the stars, and many civilizations have discovered this. In their 2017 paper entitled Fast Radio Bursts from Extragalactic Light Sails, Avi Loeb and his colleague Manasavi Lingam did some number crunching to determine exactly what the capabilities of a narrow beam radio burst pushing a light sail would be and what it would take in order to be able to generate a beam like this. The conclusions they came to were rather fascinating. It was determined that a radio beam capable of pushing, say, half a million tons worth of mass to 50% of the speed of light, again, flashing briefly across our field of vision, would only require a solar power station approximately twice the size of our planet. Yeah, beyond our capabilities, but certainly within the capabilities of a Kardashev Level 1 civilization. And if only a small percentage of repeating fast radio burst sources that we've detected thus far are coming from extraterrestrial civilizations, what does that say about the population of advanced civilizations throughout the galaxy? Well, those numbers were rather spectacular as well. Given the number of fast radio burst sources that we found that just happened to be striking our planet in particular, it indicates that there could be as many as 10,000 advanced civilizations capable of traveling between the stars at relative speeds with very large spacecraft. 
And if there are 10,000 civilizations in our galaxy, and by the way, that's not very many if you consider that there's a hundred billion stars throughout the galaxy, well, it's still at least conceivable that one or perhaps several of them have been able to send spacecraft to our solar system and dispatch a number of probes to see what might be lurking on the third planet in the solar system right in the middle of the Goldilocks zone. Again, all speculation, of course, but it still makes the entire prospect of alien visitors a lot more feasible when you consider that that sort of technology is not only possible, but we can conceive of how an advanced civilization could build it. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, please subscribe. It's very important to the success of my channel. And once again, please check the description for various ways to support this content so I can keep bringing it to you. And as always, stay angry about space.